Alright guys, welcome back uh, to episode number two of Making Minecraft with the Unreal Engine. So, in this one we're going to be going over, um, we'll be putting the pickaxe in the player's hands, and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to get started on destructible materials. So, you might be aware if you've played Minecraft, I assume everyone watching this has played or at least seen some Minecraft. Um, when you break down a block, the block starts to crack. And eventually it gets so cracked that the block breaks completely. Um, and so to simulate that effect of the block cracking, we need to basically edit the material of the block at runtime. Uh, so we need to set up a special material to make that happen. Um, also my project name has changed, it's now called Minecraft, but that's alright, just ignore that. Everything's the exact same. Um, one thing that I also had in the last tutorial that I think is kind of nice is um, the capsule component used to be really far out. If I drag this down and then uh, hold shift and just click down here and then hit W, you can see that I think last time the character was way out here. And the reason that's a problem is because if we try to walk forward, we collide long before we actually uh, reach the edge. So just um you might need to set your snap sizes to something else but just go ahead and click on the cat player character click on mesh hold shift and select all of these um and then just drag that out so that the camera is basically right at the front of the capsule the little collision radius and so now what we can do is actually walk right up to blocks um just like you do in, in actual minecraft in minecraft you can get right up next to them pretty much um, so yeah, that just makes it a little bit better. It's not a huge thing you have to do, but I like it. I just like to, you know, have the, the Minecraft feel going. So the next thing I want to show you guys how to do, which is really simple, is how to, um, place the pickaxe in the player's hands. Now I'm going to go ahead and hide the mesh one p So if we click on mesh one p and then just search for visible, we can actually take the mesh one p away. If I had some Minecraft arms, I could put those on, but I don't have any um, animated Minecraft hands, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that for now. Just just hide it. It's still there, but we're just hiding it. So, Anyways, um, the next thing to do is to drag in the pickaxe that I give you. So here it is here. Um, now, that'll be linked in the description. All you have to do is just drag that in. I'll... Um, I'll go ahead and show you guys what that looks like when you drag it in. So the uh, asset for that will be in the description. You can go ahead and just download that. But um, all that's going to happen is you're going to drag it in. And then it will say, um, it'll say, do you want to import as a skeletal? And then just don't change any of the options, basically. Just drag it in, select OK. You don't need to change anything. And then you should have this stuff here. Um, you know what, I'll go ahead and show you guys, because I think it's a little bit unfair to just tell you what to do. You guys will probably want to actually see it. So, what you want to do is make a new folder inside of meshes. We'll call it wieldables, right? And you just want to drag in the texture and the FBX file. And then don't change any of the settings and go import all. Um, and then select yes all. Oops. I had no all, but that's alright. Okay. So let's rename this. In fact, we won't rename it for now. Just double click on it. And um, inside of here, we're going to rename this one, this material. Rename that to M underscore M underscore pickaxe underscore diamond. And then inside of here, just look up uh, M underscore pickaxe underscore diamond and select that. And so now, in the little viewport here, you're going to see your pickaxe should now have the um, diamond material applied to it. And that's pretty much it. Just go ahead and save that. And um, yeah, that, that's, that's basically it. So now we have this textured pickaxe here. Now you can delete this pickaxe texture if you want, you don't really need it anymore. Oh, actually no you do, because it 
Uh, all you need to do for this pickaxe texture is just rename it to T underscore pickaxe underscore diamond and then just put it in your uh, textures folder but I already have one so we can just go ahead and get rid of that um, also uh, the material should be in the materials folder as well as you can see mine's in there so once you have all that done I'll just refresh everything um, right so that's the whole process of importing the pickaxe, very easy stuff, um, really don't have to do much. So anyways, once you have the uh, pickaxe, go ahead and select your character in the scene. And um, under the components you'll see fp underscore gun. And I've changed mine to fp underscore wield that item, but for you it will be fp underscore gun. So just go ahead and click on um, fp underscore gun. And then where it says Skeletal Mesh, just select the pickaxe. And now, already when we hit play, we have a pickaxe. It was that easy to implement, so very, very easy stuff there. Now, you'll notice mine is FP Wielded Item. To get it to uh, be called FP Wielded Item, just go into your character class, go into the .h file and change FP Gun to FP Wielded Item. You'll also need to change all the FP guns here to FP wielded item. You don't have to do that, but I just think FP wielded item is a little bit more clean. Um, so if you don't really want to do that or you don't have the time or whatever, don't worry about it. It's just to sort of clean things up a wee bit. So the last thing that I'm going to go over um, just before I end this tutorial is I'm going to show you guys how to create a texture that changes um, at runtime. Because we want the blocks to have a cracking effect, right? And so to get that functionality, we need to make a dynamic material. So if I click on materials and go into my grass material, you can see right now we just have the grass texture plugged into the base color. That's the only thing. Well, that won't do. We actually need to edit this a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just hold the Alt key and then click on this and it will break the link. So all you do is just hold Alt, click on it, and it gets rid of that. The next thing to do is add another texture sample. So I'm going to go texture sample and then uh, where it says select texture I'm going to use T underscore break. Now here we're going to do something a little bit complicated and I don't really expect you guys to understand this. I'm not really going to explain it. Um, but drag the node out here and use a linear interpolate. And then for the B plug in a constant so just right click search for a constant and then set the value of that constant to 1. Drag 1 into this B node here. And then finally for the alpha node, what I'm going to do is get a scalar parameter. And I'll plug that into alpha. So this parameter here, I'm going to call it cracked. We'll do cracking value. And this is going to be a value ranging from uh, 0 to 1 where 0 is it is completely uh, destroyed and 1 is in good condition. You'll see what I mean by that in a second. Uh, but let's go ahead and drag this out here. And I want to drag this out to a multiply. And just for OCD's sake I'm going to connect that to B so the, the wires don't overlap and we'll plug this one into A. And then finally you can plug that into the base color. So I want to show you guys what I mean by the cracking value. So as you can see, if we look at this texture now, it's completely cracked. This is the point at which our block is going to be destroyed, right? Well, if I go to my cracking value here and set it to 1, you can see our block is now in good condition. If we set it to 0 0.5, the block would be like partially destroyed. So because we're using this value to manipulate how broken the block is, um, at runtime, when the player goes to break the block, we can actually change the block's look so it slowly cracks as the player breaks it. Make sure that you set the default value to 1, because by default we want all of our blocks to be in good condition until the player actually comes along and breaks them. So that's basically the whole texture. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'm just going to go over some of the more uh, code-related stuff. Again, we were just sort of working on some basic stuff. So now you have the pickaxe. Um, and we cannot break these yet, um, but uh, yeah, run right out, not breakable. In the next one, we'll uh, start adding the code to make that happen. And I would say by tutorial 4, 
we should have fully breakable blocks. So anyways, guys, I'll see you in the next video.